हालेलुया हालेलुया बाबा the Lord. Kika tunamshukuru Bwana kwa ajili ya siku hii. We thank God today. Ni asubuhi njema. It's another good morning. Ambao Mungu wetu ameweza kufanya kwa ajili ya kila mmoja wetu. Which, which the Lord has made for the sake of each and every one of us. Kitu moja naelewa ni kwamba what, uh, what I can tell you today. Wakati Mungu anapokusanya watu wake. Whenever God brings together his people. Ana sababu ya kuweka pamoja. He has a reason for putting them together. Ana sababu ya kuwaleta pamoja. He has a reason for bringing them together. Kitu moja naelewa ni kwamba what I understand today. Wiki ambazo zimepita the week switch has gone kuna mambo mengi ambayo tumejifunza katika hali kama hii ambayo tunaipitia there are many things that we have learned from what we are going through now and now kuhusu nyakati hizi nyakati hii za corona yes, more specifically this time of corona ni wakati ambapo watu wengi wamechanganyikiwa it is a time where there is a lot of confusion ni wakati ambapo people. watu wanaishi kwa uoga people are living in fear watu wamekaa katika hali ya kutoelewa wafanye nini wafanye nini are unable to understand what to do and what Lakini not to do. Kitu moja ni kwamba, but what I can tell you is one thing. Wakati Mungu anaponena na watu wake, whenever God is speaking to his people, anawapatia tumaini. He, he always gives them hope. Anawapatia tumaini. He will always give them hope. Kwa hivyo tunaishi kwa tumaini ambayo tumepokea kutoka kwa Mungu. So we are living by the hope that we have received from Tugaji God. Glory to Reverend Chokera. Our pastor Reverend Chokera. Mungu amemtumia katika njia tofauti. God has used him in a very great way. Amemchukua amemtumia katika njia kuu um, he has used him in a very great way amekuwa ni wabaraka kwetu he has been of a much blessing to him yeah, yeah, all of us our hearts have been blessed especially wakati kama huu most of this time we are living wakati ambapo hata makanisa imekuwa imefungwa especially the time when the, the churches has been in, uh, 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 have been locked down lakini nashukuru mungu but i thank god kwa ajili kila ujumba nao leta kila wakati because the message that comes every time imekuwa ni baraka it has been a, a, a message of a blessing imekuwa ya kutujenga it has been making our heart kama pia kukumbuka kwamba and then i also want us to remember hata nyakati kama hizi even at seasons like this ili huduma hii zidi kuendelea for this uh, for, 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 the, for the ministry to go on ni vyema kwamba tuweze kusimama na hii kazi ya Bwana. It is important that we support the work of God. Pitia kwa matoleo yetu. Through our giving, kuna paybill number. There is a paybill number. Na hata pia kuna Mpesa number. There is also an Mpesa number. Na pia hapa kanisani ukija pia kuna hao mahali ambapo utaweka hiyo zadaka yako. Even here in the church we have a box where you can uh, you Neta can give your offering. Na kwa ajili ya kazi ya Bwana. And this will be of a blessing to the work of God. Wapendwa siku ya leo. And therefore today, wache kawe ni siku ya kipekee. Let it be a special day. Hata ukiondoka hapa siku hii even as you move out today kwamba hakika nimekupokea nimekutana nime na Mungu wangu wapenda waona utusikia kwa mitandao those who are listening us from from online tafadhali muweze kupokea kama jinsi Bwana atakavyowanenea may you receive this message as god is going to minister to you ni Mungu ananena na kila mmoja because god is speaking to each and every one kupokea kutoka kwa Bwana whoever is ready to receive from him kwa wakati huu and therefore today nataka tuwe tayari kumkaribisha mchungaji wetu let us be ready to receive our pastor ambaye ataenda kutumika na Mungu katika njia ya kipekee as he is going to be used by god in a very special way kama ilivyo kawaida yetu as it has always a let us be on our feet. We clap our hands as we are come out. Let us pray for the man of God. God bless you for welcoming me to share the word of God. Ah Mungu awabariki kwa kunikaribisha kushiriki neno la Mungu. I want once more to take this opportunity to thank God for the for the time he has given us to be able to share his word. 
mshukuru Mungu kwa nafasi hii amenipa kushiriki neno lake. Yes, been a blessing to each one of us. Amekuwa baraka kwa kila mmoja wetu. For the number of times that we have been able to share from this pulpit. Kwa muda ambazo tumeshiriki katika madhabahu haya. God has been and has been faithful all through. Mungu amekuwa mwaminifu muda wote. Yes, been able to use us to release uh, messages that can be able to transform lives. Ametutuma kuachilia ujumbe ambazo zaweza badilisha maisha. Uh, last week we were able to share from the history of David. Uh, Juma iliyopita tuliweza kushiriki historia ya Daudi. And we learned on how we can be able to 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 to, to slay our, our giants. Na tulijifunza jinsi ya kuweza kuangusha maadui wetu, majitu so, wetu. So I believe we are able to learn something out of that message. Na mimi kwamba tuweza kujifunza kitu katika ujumbe ule. Uh, the Lord wants us to be able to to overcome those forces that fight our destiny. Mungu anataka tujipoze kupigana zile vita zile nguvu zinapigana na hatima yetu. I know the devil is not happy when he when when he, he realizes that that God is promoting you. Adui yuko na furaha wakati anaona Mungu anakuinua. So I want to believe that you you have learned something from what the Lord has been able to speak to us from from this pulpit. Nataka niamini kwamba umejifunza jambo kwa ile Mungu ametupa kufundisha katika madhabahu haya. And even today I I want to believe us to believe God. Na leo nataka tuamini Mungu that is going to speak to us. Hata tuzungumzia. Um, before before we, we share the word of God let us pray. Kabla tushiriki neno tunaweza omba. Our dear heavenly Father. Baba wetu mpendwa in the name of your son Jesus Christ. Kwa jina la mwanao Yesu Kristo. We know without you we can do nothing. Tunajua bila wewe hatuwezi kitu. Lord use us as your vessels tutumie kama vyombo to be able to pass the message you want your children to hear. Kupitisha ujumbe unaotaka wana wako kusikia. We dedicate ourselves into your hands. Tujikabidhi mikononi mwako and pray that Lord you use us. Tunaomba ukutumie. Let your spirit take over. Roho wako akatawale. Give us the spirit of revelation. Tupatie roho ufunuo and let us come communicate the same tuweze kuwasiliana sawa request that you give us a trance of speech tunaomba ukatupatie usemi mzuri that you may be able to deliver your message ikaweze kufikisha ujumbe wako in jesus name we pray kwa jina la yesu tunaomba amen amina so today i want us to share from a very important topic leo nataka tujifunze katika somo muhimu as i have always said kama vile ambavyo ninasema i don't just preach for the sake of preaching siubiri tu ni ubiri just like other ministers kama wa, wa huduma wengine we preach the message na ubiri ujumbe that it may bring change in our lives ikaweze kuleta mabadiliko i remember about two weeks ago i was able to share with you about change natumia nakumbuka wiki mbili zimepita nimehubiri kuhusu mabadiliko these messages are intended that they may change they may transform your life jumbe hizi zimekusudiwa kuleta mabadiliko maishani mwako and therefore i believe that the lord is going to use this message today na ninaamini mungu atatumia ujumbe huu leo to minister to your heart kutuhudumia mioyo yetu i want to share on a topic test of faith in life nataka kuzungumza ujumbe ambao unasema majaribu ya imani maishani mwetu tests of faith in life majaribu ya imani maishani mwetu every christian kila mkristo anago some kind of test or trial in his life anapitia majaribu ya maishani mwake uh, we know each one of us we know those of us who have been to school wanajua kila mmoja wetu ambao tumepitia shuleni that for you to be able to move to the next class kwako kuweza kuingia eh, darasa la pili you have to be tested lazima ujaribiwe uh, in the places of work mahali pa kazi for you to be promoted kwako kuinuliwa you have to pass an interview lazima upite majaribu for one to be to be admitted in a, in a, in a, in a higher aya level of institution uweko katika sehemu nyingine ya juu katika serikali maybe you want to be admitted to a high school or a university ama kupelekwa katika shule ama chuo kikuu you have to pass your exams lazima upite mtihani and also we have come to realize that every company when it is employing na kumbuka pia makampuni mengi wakati wanaajiri watu there are some qualifications that they are looking after kuna mahitimu ambayo wanaoangalia uh, the other day i was looking at an organization siku nyingine niliangalia shirika lingine that is that, that is called employee ontario ambayo linaitwa namna hiyo and I, I, i discovered that they they say they are used they normally are, are, are used by companies to be able to get workers for them nao wanatumika na makampuni mengine kuwatafutia wafanyikazi and there are some qualifications that they look for na kuna mahitimu ambayo wanaangalia some of the qualifications i'm just going to mention them here timu ambayo ni, ni kama haya ambayo so that we realize that we want quality tunahitaji uzuri in our services katika huduma yetu one thing that they look for is 
they, they look for is communication skills. Jambo la kwanza wanaangalia ni ile ujuzi wa kuzungumza, kuwasiliana. Before you are employed, kabla uajiriwe, they want to know whether you can be able to effectively communicate. Wanaangalia kama unajua kuwasiliana vizuri. They look for honesty. Wanaangalia uaminifu. That you be able to give accurate information and timely. Kwamba unaweza toa habari iliyo sawa kwa wakati. They also ask for they, they normally ask for technical competency. Wanaangalia hali yako ya kutenda kazi. You could be you should be able to understand the work you are being employed to, to do. Lazima uweze kufanya kazi ambayo umepatiwa ufanye. They normally consider the work ethics. Wanaangalia zile tabia za kufanya kazi. You should be able to do your work. Lazima ufanye kazi in an ethical manner. Katika hali yenye tabia nzuri. You are supposed to be flexible. Lazima ni mtu ambaye unaweza tumika sehemu kuhi. That when we are employed we are not going to be there stiff kwamba utakatu mahali moja you can be trained lazima ufundishwe and do other things na ufanye kazi zingine also they look for somebody who can can, can work with others freely na wanaangalia mtu anaweza fanya kazi na wengine vizuri that is you are supposed to, to have that teamwork capacity kufanya kazi kama kikundi vizuri you have to you are supposed to have determination lazima ni mtu ambaye ume una juhudi and you should have problem solving skills na uko na uko na mbinu za kuweza kutatua shida and more qualities that they are looking for na pia timu zingine ambazo wanatafuta what am i telling you brethren nawaambia nini wapende that in this world katika maisha haya before you are employed to work in a particular institution kabla uajiriwe katika shirika lolote or maybe you are, you are before you are elevated to, to the next level kama kabla hujainuliwa kukwezo katika kiwango kile you are supposed to pass some kind of interview or some kind of test lazima upite mitihani na majaribu that is normal hiyo ni kawaida here on earth hapa duniani but before you go to the next level kabla uingie kiwango kingine before you are promoted to the next stage kabla uinue kiwango kile cha have to be tested first unajaribiwa and you have to qualify na unapita now the same happens in the kingdom of god vivyo hivyo inatendeka kwa ufalme wa mungu remember today we are talking about test of faith in life kumbuka leo tunazungumza majaribu ya imani katika maisha before god elevate you to the next level kabla mungu akuinue kiwango cha pili you are supposed to pass some kind of trials that is going to bring on your way lazima upite majaribu yatakayokuwa njiani mwako in the book of first timothy chapter 3 verse 6 kitabu cha timotheo wa kwanza mlango wa 3 mstari wa 6 god discourages the use of novices in the work of ministry use of novices people who are young spiritually Mungu anakataa kutumia utumizi wa watu walio wachanga. He discourages using people who have been born again, who have just been born again recently in the kingdom. Anakataa utumizi wa watu ambao tu waliokoka hivi majuzi katika uoko. He wants them to sit down and be taught the word of God first. Shaka wakae chini wajifunze neno la Mungu kwanza. He wants them to get some kind of experience before they are involved in the work of ministry. Anataka wapate maarifa kabla hawajaingia katika huduma. So just like we do here on earth. Kama tunavyofanya hapa ulimwenguni. God also is concerned about quality. Mungu anahusika na uzuri. And he's looking for the best. Na anatafuta kilicho bora. To use in the work of God. Kutumia kwa kazi ya in the book of second chronicles kitabu cha mambo ya nyakati wa pili chapter 2 verses 13 to 14 mlango wa pili mlango wa 10 mstari wa 13 na 14 here we see solomon talking about the kind of require the men required to work in the temple sulemani anaelezea aina ya watu anataka watumike katika and he was looking for skill na alitafuta ile 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 watu wenye taaluma he was looking for people who had some kind of experience watu wenye ujuzi fulani who could give quality work wangetoa kazi and that is what he did. He requested that he be supplied with such kind of workers. Alisema atafutiwe watu kama hawa. And the craftsmen were brought. Na watu waliletwa people who knew their work. Waliojua kazi yao. So God is looking for people. Kwa hivyo Mungu anatafuta watu can effectively serve, serve in the work of ministry. Wanaoweza fanya kazi ya huduma vizuri. Today particularly in our country Kenya. Katika nchi yetu ya Kenya. We are we are facing a lot of challenges from the work or from the workers in the, work, in the kingdom of God tunapitia changamoto nyingi kwa watumishi wanaofanya kazi kwa wale some of the ministers of the gospel hasa watumishi wengi wa Mungu because they have not gone through the processes that God usually takes his people kwa maana hawajapitia zile hatua Mungu anapitisha watu wake they are making so many mistakes wametenda makosa mengi and they, and, and they make they make people scoff a uh, uh, scoff at us na wanafanya watu wana tudhihaki they speak bad concerning the work of the ministry wanazungumza mabaya kuhusu kazi ya huduma some of us some of the things we are doing baadhi yetu kazi ambayo vitu tunafanya are not theologically correct si mambo ambayo tumesome tumesomeshwa vizuri and sometimes when we do things that are logically wrong 
ambao pia katika kijiolojia yako So God wants us to be trained first. Mungu anataka tukae katika mafunzo. And when I talk about training I'm not only talking about the human training. Wakati nasema mafunzo sisemi mafunzo ya wanadamu. I'm talking about God directed training. Nasema mafunzo ambayo yameongozwa na Mungu. And that is what we are going to be sharing today. Na hayo ndio nazungumza siku ya leo. So God is looking for some qualities, for some qualifications Mungu. for his people to serve in ministry. Mungu anatafuta juhudi ambazo mtu atakaye napitie kabla ya. And I want you to know that I'm not talking about ministry that you, you, you think you are going to be a pastor and be a minister in some particular way na mimi nataka ujue kwamba sizungumuzi mambo ya huduma ili kwamba unataka kuingia huduma ya kuwa I'm talking about you serving God in whichever capacity sema wewe kuingia kumtumikia Mungu katika kiwango cha So God wants you to be somebody qualified Mungu anataka ni mtu ambaye amehitimu and what they that you are not going to assume him when you are serving in the ministry na hutaenda kumwaibisha katika huduma So God is looking for faith Mungu anatafuta imani He is going to do the every thing possible Mungu atafanya kile kinachohitajika to raise the level of your faith kuinua kiwango cha imani yako so that you can be able to be effective ivi kwamba uweze kuwa wa juhudi because the bible says Bili inasema that without faith bila imani we cannot please god tuwezi mpendeza and that the righteous are living by faith na wewe haki wataishi kwa imani so when you when you are operating when we are operating in the environment of the work of the kingdom tunapofanya mazingara tunafanya kazi kwa mazingara ya we are supposed to involve faith lazima tuhusishe imani it is faith that drives us ni imani inayotusukuma it is faith that causes there to be effectiveness in the work ni imani inayofanya kuwe na juhudi kwa kazi so god is going to make sure mungu atahakikisha that he is going to take you through through channels it's going to take you through test and trials atakupitisha mitihani na majaribu ili yabo to let raise the level of your faith uinue kiwango chako chini the other thing that god is looking for jambo lingine mungu anatafuta is skill ni 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 ni, ni taaluma. He wants somebody who can be able to do work to do his work skillfully. Anataka mtu anaweza kufanya kazi yake kwa ukitaaluma. He's looking for experience. Mtu mwenye ujuzi. He wants somebody who has experience the work of ministry. Mungu ambaye ana ujuzi kwa kazi ya huduma. Somebody who cannot just be challenged by the devil. Mtu ambaye hata shurutishwa na shetani. And because of that you just give up. Na kwa sababu ya hiyo awache huduma. He wants people who have gone through fire, people who have gone through hard moments in ministry. Nataka watu wapitia magumu na moto. And therefore God is going to do everything possible. Mungu atafanya kinachohitaji. Make sure that you raise the level of your skill. Kuhakikisha umeinua kiwango cha raise the level of your experience in the work. Kiwango cha taaluma ya. God is looking for character. Mungu anatafuta tabia. If you are going to be effective in ministry, kama utakuwa wa juhudi kwa huduma, your character, your character must be okay. Tabia yako iwe sawa. And God is going to use to, to bring everything on your way. Mungu ataleta kila kitu njiani mwako. Trying to get your character right. Hivi kwamba kutengeneza tabia yako. Therefore we know from the word of God. Kwa hivyo tunaenda kwa neno la Mungu but God also requires us to be disciplined. Mungu anataka tuwe na nidhamu. He talks about us being self controlled. Anasema tuwe ni watu wenye kujifunza. God is going to do everything possible. Mungu atafanya kila kitu. Make sure that you are self controlled. Kwamba uko na kiasi. He's going to make sure that you are disciplined. Uhakikishe uko na nidhamu. And therefore he will do so many things. Atatenda mambo mengi. And bring past and trials in your life. Kuleta majaribu na kitu. Kwamba you can be disciplined. Ivi kwamba uwe na nidhamu. God is going to to be dependent on him. Mungu anataka uwe wa kumtegemea. We have to learn to depend on God. Lazima tujifunze kumtegemea Mungu. As we learned last week, nilivyojifunza David was able to kill his giant. Judi aliweza kumshinda David. Because he learned to depend on God. Kwa maana alimtegemea Mungu. And therefore God knows you cannot win this war by your own power. Mungu anajiwezi shinda vita hii kwa nguvu zake. And therefore he is going to use every way. Na atatumia kila njia. Because you to learn the secret of depending on him. Jifunza siri ya kumtegemea. And that is what God will do. Na ndivyo Mungu anataka. And is doing in our lives. Na atatenda maishani. Therefore in the scripture Yes. katika maandiko there are quite a number of scriptures that that usually mention us going through trials and tests kuna maandiko mengi yanatuelezea kupitia majaribu na mitihani in the book of first peter chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 kitabu cha petro wa kwanza mstari wa 6 na 7 the lord is giving us some reason as to why we are supposed to go through trials and tests bibi inasema sababu zetu kupitia kupitia majaribu na mitihani he says that our faith is so precious before god Imani yetu ni muhimu sana mbele ya Mungu. That God is going to put it to the test. Kwamba Mungu ataipitisha majaribu. And therefore, kwa hivyo, he want us to, to reach before God on that day. Anataka tumfikie Mungu on the day of judgment. Siku hiyo ya kiyama. When we are in praise and honor of his name. Tukiwa mbele uwepo wake. And that can only be possible. Na hiyo itawezekana tu. If we are pass the test and trials in our lives. Kama umepitia majaribu na mitihani. So because of the preciousness of our faith. Kwa sababu ya umuhimu dhamana ya 
allows trials and tests to come our way. Anakubali majaribu na mitihani hizo. In the book of James, kitabu cha Yakobo, chapter 1 verse 2 to 4, moja na mstari wa 2 na 4. God tells us that to count it all joy. Anasema tuhesabu yote faida. When we go through trials and tests, tunapopitia miti majaribu na mitihani. Because by allowing this to happen to us, kwa maana kupitia haya, he wants us to gain patience. Anataka tupate subiri. He wants us to gain experience. Pate na ujuzi to be effective in ministry. Kwa watu wa juhudi kwa imukaudi. In the book of Romans, kitabu cha Warumi. And I want us to read this. Nataka tusome hii kitabu cha Warumi. Let's read the book of Romans. Nataka tusome kitabu cha Warumi. I want us to read chapter 5 from verses 2. Nataka nisome kitabu cha Warumi mlango wa 5 mstari wa 2. Now the Bible says Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and the character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who has given us so you from the scripture that we have read biblia inasema hivi we are being god is explaining to us the benefits of tests in our lives inatupatia umuhimu wa majaribu maishani he said that what we are looking for is hope tunachotafuta ni tunaona let me tell you church naomba kanisa the most important thing that a man can have kitu muhimu mwanadamu anaweza kuwa nacho is hope ni tumaini you lose hope kipoteza tumaini you become nothing umekuwa bure there is no way people hang themselves sababu watu wanajinyonga there is no way people commit suicide sababu watu wanajitia kitanzi it's because they are hopeless ni kwa maana wamekosa when you become hopeless unapokuwa bila no purpose for living unakosa maana ya kuja for what god is looking and want to strengthen in your life kile mungu anatafuta anataka kudhibitisha is hope ni tumaini and as you try to strengthen hope in him unapozizingatia tumaini ndani yake the scripture is telling us here maandishi anatuambia that is going to allow trials and temptations to come our way kubali majaribu na mitihani kufa so that it can increase our perseverance ili kwamba aongeze subira and it says when our perseverance has grown na subira itakapoongezeka it is going to produce also character italeta tabia as i mentioned hali kama vile nimetaka god is looking for character in every believer mungu anatafuta tabia kwa kila and when our character is okay tabia It is going to bring hope. Italeta tumaini. And the hope does not disappoint. Na tumaini haitufai. Because we know one day we are going to meet our Lord. Kwa maana siku moja tutakutana Mungu. Also the word of God shows. Bwana anaonyesha. In the book of Psalms, kitabu cha Zaburi. I want us to read from chapter 66. Zaburi kuanzia mstari wa 66. Uh, Psalms chapter 66. Zaburi 66. Uh, the word of God is telling us. Neno la Bwana lasema. And I want us to read from verses 10. Kwanza mstari wa kumi. For you O oh God have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You have brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to run over our hands. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to reach fulfillment. Mm. Now from the scripture that I have read here, kwa maandishi ambayo nimesoma, even is trying to explain what God what where God what, the, the path that God allows his servants to go through. Daudi anaeleza njia ambayo Mungu anapitisha mtu mwingine. He is talking about refining. Anasema kubadilisha. Now when we talk about refining, unasema wakati unabadilisha. Probably I have a better understanding here. Eh njia mfahamu mzuri hapa. Because I have come from the engineering field. Kwa sababu nimepitia katika ile sekta ya engineer. Where I have witnessed metal being you know can you can you think of a, a place where you put metal let's talk of furnace you put metal in a furnace We, ni, ni kama umeingiza chuma katika tanuru it is heated inachomeka it becomes liquid inakuwa maji maji and you can pour it like water unaweza mwanga chuma and kama and you take any shape na inaweza kuwa umo lolote and before, before it goes to that process na kabla ijafika pale where you want to cast a particular object unataka kutengeneza chombo fulani it is refined inachomwa now refining is a is a, is a process where you remove the slag and every impurity ni mahali unatoa uchafu na mambo mengi 
Now what comes out after we remove the impurity and the slag is pure metal. Brethren God is also looking for pure metal. He wants you to be pure. He wants you to be refined so that it can be worthy in his hands as he uses you. As he uses you. So he, he, he is saying now in the process of refining, David is saying that God who brought us at, who brought us into the net. He laid affliction on our backs. You, you can imagine what he's talking about. That God allows you to enter into a trap. I praise the name of the Lord. He allows you to enter into a trap. You know when, when, you, are, when you are trapped somewhere, you are going to try so many ways to come out of the trap. And as you try those ways, and as you fail, then you are going to realize there is somebody who can depend on. And the process, you are coming out better. He is talking also about laying affliction on their backs. It's like you are, it's like, it's like you are being pained. You go through pain. How many Christians today are going through pain? And we, we don't rejoice when we are going through pain. But according to the word of God, when you go through pain for moments in your life, you come out better as a servant of the Lord. David continues to say in verses 12, you have caused men to ride over our hands. Because God has allowed men to ride over your head. There are people who are causing confusion in your life. There are people who are telling you in different ways. There are people who have been allowed to disturb you. Sometimes you go fasting and praying, casting out demons. You just find yourself going through very hard times. And it is God who has allowed it to happen. So the word of God is clear. The word of God he continues to say, We went through fire and through water. God allows you to go sometimes through fire. Very hard times and hard moments. He allows you go through, through fire, you, through water, places where you are sponge, places where you, you really face challenge in life. What the God is looking for is quality. Hallelujah. But you brought us out to a rich place. The intention why God is doing all this is that after you have gone through all these moments of trials and tests, you come to a large place. You come to your fulfillment. You become a refined, a refined vessel in His hand. So, my brethren, God allows us to go through these challenges so that we can become better for use in his kingdom. I want to mention some methods that God uses to train you and today as I share this word I know you could have been going through some of the things I'm going to mention. I want just you to lay yourself into the hands of God and let him shape you. Let him work on you. Let him work on you. Today we are saying, and I always say, God is not yet through with me. He is still working on me. And I pray may you give God that space that he may also continue serving, uh, using you. But you have to go through the path of trials and tests. Number one, God uses wilderness experience to test and train his people. Wilderness experience in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. I want us to read. We read from the book of Deuteronomy. We read chapter 8 from verses 2 to 5. The Bible says, and you shall remember that the Lord will go lend you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, fend you with manner which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, 
that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every one that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out, or did your foot soil these 40 years? You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his sons, so the Lord when God sustains you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the word of God is very clear. The word of God is telling us God can use decent experience to train his people so that he can have the right kind of people that he want to use. So from the word that you have read, God is reminding them through a servant Moses so that you shall remember the Lord one God. He tells them who lend you 40 years in the wilderness. Now you are saying that to humble you and to test you. What you are saying is that God can allow you, brother, he can allow you to be in a, some kind of wilderness where he want to test and to prove you some experiences that God wants you to gain he is going to, pay, to take you through, through some kind of experiences what happened to the children of Israel in the wilderness is that these people really suffered they lacked water they lacked food they lacked those things that they were used to for and now a time came that they were even complaining and murmuring telling, telling Moses that we like back to go back to where we came from because they desired those things and the Lord is saying that he designed them that they go through this hard time 40 years in the wilderness because he wanted to test them because he wanted to try them so that he could be able to know what was in their heart let me tell you God can also do the same to us and he is doing this every time he is testing us every time he wants want to know what is in your heart are you committing to me are you, ready? Are you ready to sacrifice for the sake of me? Now God is going to allow situations. Probably some of the things we are going through today it's like some kind of wilderness. Maybe you don't have a job. Maybe you are lacking something very vital in your life. And, 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 and you feel it's like God has forgotten you. Let me tell you, brother, sister, that God is telling us, just as he did to the children of Israel, he does the same to us. He allows situations in us. He allows us to go through wilderness. Some wilderness experience. Where there is no water. Where we lack food. Where we lack vital necessities in our lives. And what God is looking for. He is seeking for quality. Out of your life. So they suffered hunger. They suffered thirst. And as they suffered, God is saying that He was stretching their hearts to see their commitment. So the same with us, brethren. Probably you are going through very hard, challenging time this time. Let me encourage you. God is not yet through with you. There is something that God is looking into your heart. And after he is through, you are going to be elevated to the next level. The other method that God uses is delayed answer to prayer. Sometimes you pray, my brother. You wait upon God. Maybe through fasting, prayer and fasting. But you wait and nothing is happening. It's like God has never heard your prayer. Nothing is happening. One month passes. 
Eh, Two months passes. I have maybe goals. Eh, Nothing has happened. And you wonder, is God there really? Je, Mungu yupo? Maybe people are challenging you. Watu wengi As David has said here, Kama vile that he has allowed people to ride over his head. There are things that are happening to your life. Kuna vitu things mwake. that are so disturbing. Mambo ya Maybe the family you are, in the family level you are having challenges. Jamii Maybe financially you have been waiting upon God, nothing is happening. Lali mungu, it's like there is no help from anywhere. Hakuna and you are praying, nothing is happening. Na the answer to your prayer is delayed. I want to encourage you, my brother. I want to tell you that God is still there and is very concerned. I want to give you an example in the book in the book of John. I want us to read from chapter 11. We read verses 1 to 6. A certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister mother. It was that many who anointed, law, anointed the Lord with the fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sisters sent for Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved the mother and our sister Lazarus. So, when he heard that, that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. He got the report that Lazarus' friend was dead. And, 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 and he said that Lazarus is not dead. He is just asleep. I'm going to do this that people may give glory to God. I will go there and raise him up. And the Bible says Jesus stayed where he was two more days. That is unlaid prayer. To say, Mary and the mother were expecting him to come there running. When you are called and told to come and you pray with a family that is going through a challenge like this one and you know you have the capacity and ability to do it you can rush there. But Jesus is standing another two days. And the when he went there, the Bible says that the body had been buried and had been in the tomb for four days. It was very late. Let me tell you, brethren, that sometimes also God does not act as fast as you want. He takes his time. He might decide to test you through this method. Whereby you are going to pray. He does not answer your prayer immediately. You wait upon him. Probably you go to a place like Catalon to seek the face of the Lord. Or some other mountain to seek his face. And it does not happen immediately. What God is doing, he is taking his time. And he wants to train you to learn perseverance. To learn to wait upon him. So brethren, let us learn to allow God to have his way. Sometimes you cast this as a demon. Demon you try to maybe go on your knees and they say demons must be defeated. Go out in Jesus name. You see an enemy standing before you. But today I have this news. It is always not an enemy. Sometimes it is God who is working. And even if it is the devil who is working. God allows situations like this to happen to train you to get something better out of you. Therefore I want you to do God this way. When you see your prayers being delayed, want to try to help God, want to try to run up and down looking for solutions, God is still concerned. He has heard your prayer. It's just giving you time that you may learn. He's taking you through some kind of training. Hallelujah. 
praise the name of the Lord. I want also to think about someone like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know the story in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel chapter 3. You remember these, these three young men. They had put their faith and trust in God. And they said that they are not going to worship an idol. That's a statue that the king and, and, and men. They said we are not going to bow before, before an image. And they told the king that even if God is not going to save us, we are not going to bow, to bow down before your idol. And, and we know our God will save us. And then the Bible shows that they, they went through this process of trusting upon God until they were put in the fire. I want to ask you brother, I want to ask you sister, where was God? Where was God? In whom they had put their trust. Where was that God? Who allowed them to be put in the fire? He knew that I'm going to allow them to go in the fire. And I'm going to remove them from the fire that I may receive the glory. So, sometimes our prayers are not answered immediately. But in everything God is going to receive the glory. Another way that God allows us to be tested and tried is through incredible demands. He normally makes some demands to us. He has to do something that appears to be impossible on you. He tells you to do something that it's not very easy for you. And I want to give you a very good example that I have mentioned from this pulpit a number of times. This example is in the book of Genesis. Chapter 22 verses 1 and 2. But I'm not going to read there. I want us to read the book of Hebrews. Uh, touching on the same. Eh? Chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. I want us to read verse 17 to 19. Uh, when we read from the scripture, the Bible says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he had received him in a, in, a, in a figurative sense. Now, we are told here that Abraham was tested by God. God told Abraham that give me your son. Go, go, go to Mount Moriah and give me your son. Offer him as a, as a, as a sacrifice to me. And, and as we know the story, he, he obeyed. And he decided to go to the mountain that God had directed him. And, and when he went there, he was even ready to offer his son because he, he prepared the altar, bound the son, placed him there, and then he was ready to kill him. It's when he heard the voice of God telling him that you should stop. What am I telling him, brethren? Sometimes God makes very incredible demands. He tells you to do something and, and he, what he is trying to do is to see what is in your heart. You love me more than this. You love me more than your children. You love me more than your job. You love me more than your people. You love me more than the church. God is going to make a particular demand. He can even command you to leave your job. Remember the case of Jesus with that rich young man? You remember Jesus telling him and looking him and, and admiring him and telling him that I love you I like what you have said but can you go and sell what you have come and follow me this was a very hard and a almost impossible demand to this young man there are times when God demands some small, small things from us probably through giving maybe you have got a project and God, God is convicting your heart I'm telling you, can you give this thing that you love so much towards the work of ministry? 
and, and, and you find it very hard but we have heard the voice of God sometimes we fail even very small things in our tithes and our offerings this is a command from the word of God and when we fail in these small things we fail the test so God usually grows us up he wants to promote us to the next level by making some demands in us so it is you that is supposed to know it is you that is supposed to know Yes, which, which demand is God making upon, upon in my life? What is that that God, God wants me to do? And I am failing to do it. And let me tell you, just like we fail test and we are, we, we are not promoted, the same thing will happen to you. When you are not, when you are not obeying, when you don't pass the test of incredible demand, then you are, you are blessing is delayed. You cannot be taken to the next level. Another method that God uses to, to grow us is prohibited territory. There are areas that, that, that you hear from the word of God like you read in the book of Exodus chapter 20 that is, that is where we have the ten commandments you are going to hear repeatedly you are going to hear thou shalt not thou shalt not it is repeated so many times in the Bible there are so many places where God has prohibited us he says that don't do this don't do this and it is for our own benefit so when you fail these tests when God tells you you shall not and you do what he has commanded you not to you have failed the test and your blessing is delayed so God uses this test to grow us to become more effective in ministry so I want to I want, I want to challenge this one of us because the word of God has so many commands you should always remember and blessing comes after a command when you obey the commandment then the blessing follows if you don't you fail then your blessing is delayed so I want us to grow brethren by obeying those which God has placed before us the other method that God uses is persistence resistance Eh, so what God does is that you persist for something and he resists. He prevents you from receiving it. There is a very good example and I love it in the Bible. In the book of Matthew chapter 15 from verses 21 to 28 there is a, this story of the Samaritan woman who came, who came to Jesus and wanted God to, God, God, God to heal her daughter. And the, and the Bible tells us she came there and told, and told, her, told him master I want you to heal my daughter who is sick and, 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 and some things happened there but really could have discouraged men of us here it could have discouraged us the first thing that we, we see in this scripture is that when she, when she made the request to Jesus he did not give an answer he kept quiet I want to ask you how do you feel when you make a pertinent request to somebody he does, not, he does not talk he just look at you how do you feel now this lady who you beat after you? making the request to the Lord Jesus kept quiet and then next after she continued to persist the disciples told Jesus let us chase her away she's disturbing you you can see that brethren that's why I'm calling it persistence resistance she, she, she is persisting but there's a lot of resistance God is going to use the same to us as he trains he is going to make sure that you persist for something and he is going to try to resist you so that he can be able to get something out of your heart and like it was not enough 
The Bible says Jesus answered her and told her that I was sent to the sheep, the children of Israel. I was not sent to the Samaritans. I was not sent to other people out there. But I was sent to save Israelites. So you are not worthy to receive a miracle from me. But this lady continued to persist. In fact, after Jesus said this, she came to where Jesus was and knelt down at his feet. Instead of her running away, instead of her deciding to give up, she continued to persist. Now, one has I know there are many of us. I know there are many of us who have been persisting by prayer, who have been requesting and praying, but it's like there is some force preventing it from happening. It's like God is telling you, no, I'm not going to give you. Thinking that because she has knelt down before Jesus is going now to be positive, Jesus looked at her and told her, I cannot give children's food to the dog. It's like, it's like he has called her a dog. My, if it were me, I think I could have just have walked away. But to, 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 to a surprise, the, the woman did not go away. She continued persisting. And she told him, even dogs do hit crumbs that fall on the ground. Wow. Then Jesus looked at her and he said, Woman, your faith is great. May it be according to your desire. That is what God does to us, brethren. I want to encourage you today that God is working in your life. God is training you. And God wants to get somebody qualified. That's allow him to have his way. Allow him to have his way. And he is going to, to use you. Hallelujah. God, God Mungu loves you. He wants to make use of you. And therefore he is going to test you because he does not use novices. He does not use people who are not, who are not trained. He is training you. And he is working day and night to get the kind of vessel that he needs from your life. And lastly, God uses pressure. 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 <laughs> that pressure, brethren, is sometimes it can be tough. I would like you just to think and consider about Job. In the book of Job, I just want us to look at it for the sake of uh, reference. In the book of Job, if you look at the scripture there, look from chapter 1 from verses 13. Now, from 13, the Bible says, and I want you to note this, our pressure usually is used by God. Now, there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine, their oldest brothers in their bro oldest brother's house, and, they, uh, and a messenger came to Job and said, the auction were plowing and the donkeys feeding, feeding beside them. When the, when the Syrians raided them and took them away, indeed they were killed, indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then verse 16, while he was still speaking, another also came also, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned and burned the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And again, verse 17, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, the, uh, the Chaldeans for, uh, the form, uh, formed three bands, rendered the camels and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And suddenly a great weed came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. And I, I alone have come, I have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, 
and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with the wrong. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. You can imagine. Unaweza fikiria. Pressure upon pressure. There are times I believe brethren who normally go through a lot of pressure. Wakati mnapitia msukumo maishani. Before you solve this problem another problem has popped up. Kabla hujamaliza hii shida nyingine ifuje. Before you do with this problem another one has risen. Unjatatua hii nyingine na inaenda. Before you, you get school fees for your children. Kabla sio sukari ya shule mpaka. Then you get a report from up country. Report ya kutoka nyumbani na kuchu. That your mother is sick. Mama ni mgonjwa. That your dad is sick. Baba before you solve this problem another one rises up a lot of pressure comes upon you and you feel like giving up I want to tell you my brother that God uses pressure to build you up to train you to strengthen you that can be a worthy vessel in his hand so today I'm sharing with you about trials Majarimu and the tests na mitiani that people of God go through watu wa Mungu wanayopitia before they can qualify kabla wajahitimu to serve kutumika I'm also encourage you brethren that you allow God to have his way umruhusu Mungu apate nafasi sometimes we fight God wakati mimi tunapigana thinking that we are fighting with demons kitunapigana demons it is only that you are supposed to keep your heart and your ears open so to be able to, to hear and to know kusikiza na kujua and to perceive to know whether it is God na kutambua kama ni Mungu as i said earlier god is not yet through with us he is working on you he is working on me and for hours a day and he uses all these methods and many more that he can be able to get a refined vessel that he can use for his own glory so i want us to pray together today that god may have his way that the things we are going through are not going to destroy you but they are going to raise you to the next level that you may be a worthy vessel in the hands of God let us believe and pray together my dear heavenly father in the name of your son Jesus Christ we stand before your holy presence we thank you that you love us and that you use your people in the work of the kingdom as men are looking for quality we have realized from your word that also so you are looking for skilled people to serve in the work of ministry. I commit this dear ones onto our hands. As loving God, irrespective of what you are going through, we are not going to succumb to the situation. We are not going to give up. We are going, Lord, going go to persist and continue trusting in you because we know that soon and very soon, you are going to going to be through with us and you are going to do, do, bring glory to yourself by using us effectively in the work of ministry. I thank you for this brother. I thank you for this sister. Lord, after you are through with us, we are going to be worthy vessels. We find vessels in your hands that you are going to use for your glory. I pray that Lord you give us the heart of acceptance the, the heart of saying may your will be done loving God after you are through with us you can be more effective in what you intend us to accomplish in Jesus name I pray Amen so I want also to pray with any one of us those that are following this, this teachings or preaching and uh, you, you really want to give your life to Jesus Jesus loves you and he want to save you just like he has saved us he can do the same to you. So I want to pray with you. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal savior, I want you to pray this prayer behind me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. I pray for forgiveness. I I have lived far away from you for a long time. I have decided to come to you, Father. 
save my life okoa maisha yangu forgive my sins nisamehe dhambi zangu give me the grace nipe neema to overcome ya kushinda walk with me every day tembea nami kila siku and i promise through your grace na ahidi kupitia neema yako i will hold your hand nitashika mkono wako and walk with you nitatembea na all the days of my life siku zote za maisha yangu father baba write my name andika jina langu in the book of life kwa kitabu cha uzima and you devil nawe shetani from today kwanza leo i have left you nimekuacha i have come to jesus nimekuja kwa yesu i have nothing to do with you sina kitu na i will never serve you again sitakutumikia tena jesus yesu give me the grace nipe neema give me the ability nipe uwezo to follow you all the days of my life siku zote za maisha in jesus name i pray kwa jina la yesu nimeomba amen amina amen amina uh, god bless you mungu akubariki uh, as you have given your life to jesus vile umempatia yesu maisha yako the next step that you should take tua nyingine wherever you are mahali ulipo make sure that you look for a church tafuta kanisa for a place mahala where you can be you can be raised up ambapo unaweza lewa where you can be defend from the word of god unaweza lishwa neno la mungu from the place where you live mahali ambapo unaishi i believe there are, there are churches there najua kuna makanisa mahali pale where the full gospel is preached mahali injili kamili na ujua introduce yourself to a brother nenda uji uji tambulishe or, or to the church kwa kanisa lile and they are going to take care of you na watakuchugua watakuchugu. you live around around kasarani kama unaishi kasarani you are welcome to our church nikukaribisha hapa pefa kasarani god bless you karibuni join us next week mungu awabariki tukutane wiki ngapi amen amina asante